Oh, hello again. I'd like to go ahead and discuss a non-equilibrium problem involving an acid and an equilibrium problem involving an acid. I have written up on the board here to consider 0.150 molar hydrochloric acid. And underneath hydrochloric acid, I'd like to write its name, hydrochloric acid. It's an available in uh, several consumer products. There's some toilet bowl cleaners and some uh, masonry or brick and cement cleaners that contain some hydrochloric acid. Most importantly for us, hydrochloric acid is what's known as a strong acid. I have a bottle of hydrochloric acid here. And if somebody said, oh, pour a little bit into the beaker and go ahead and put your fingers into there, I would say, no, I'm not going to put my fingers into hydrochloric acid. It's a strong acid, and that means something. It means it's going to go ahead and react with my skin and probably cause me great discomfort. So uh, what is this strong acid, and why would it damage us? Let's take a look at a little reaction here. HCl is a strong acid, and our definition of a strong acid is, quite frankly, no equilibrium. Hydrochloric acid dissociates 100%, the term dissociate, to bust up. So what we have here is H plus and some chloride. I'm not very uh, oh, bothered by the chloride. Chloride's very, very innocuous and inert here. It's Cl minus NaCl table salt. You dissolve that in water and you get some chloride. This is a spectator ion. It's extremely stable. As a matter of fact, chloride is so stable, you can say that's the driving force for this reaction. Chlorine doesn't want to be bonded to hydrogen. It wants to bust up. It wants the electron that presumably is in a covalent bond here. It's not really true. The chlorine takes the electron, becomes chloride, and very stable a spectator ion. This is hydrogen ion, or what we can call a proton. After all, hydrogen is a proton and an electron. With the positive charge, hydrogen's lost its electrons, so it's just existing as a proton. And this is the active species. H plus is extremely active. It's a proton. It says, oh, I'm very reactive here. I'm going to bust up some bonds, get in between some bonds that are in the matter of your skin. And so it's very reactive. Strong acids produce lots of proton because this reaction goes 100%. So inside of a bottle of hydrochloric acid here, let me make the bottle look like a little beaker, we have lots of H plus surrounded by water molecules. We happen to have, and I don't care, lots of Cl minus, but it's the proton that's very, very reactive. And I'd like to do a little math problem with you. It's quite straightforward, and that is, let's go ahead and find out what the concentration of proton is in this 0.150 molar solution of HCl. Well, our balanced reaction is HCl busts up to give proton and chloride. And this has been mixed up to be 0.150 molar hydrochloric acid. But in actuality, there is no HCl where the hydrogen and the chlorine are together here. It's completely busted up. So I'm going to put an X through here going, it reacts 100%. That's going to produce 0.150 molar proton concentration and 0.150 molar chloride. We uh, might take a look at the math for just a moment and be confused going, well, how can you get 0.150 molar of each of these from one of those? And it's very simple to explain. Every time one of the HCl busts up, it breaks up into two pieces. So we're getting smaller pieces, proton, chloride. And we do have this effect like a banana. When you peel a banana completely, you have your banana peel and you have your whatever, your banana, the fruit itself. So you get two pieces, a peel and the fruit, where it started off as one piece. Same idea here. You have two separate pieces that came from one. So in answer to the question, what's the concentration of H plus? Here it is. Now, for some reason, maybe convenience, people don't like reporting concentration of H plus. There's a more convenient way of doing it, and that is, oh, the power of hydrogen, or the pH. Now maybe in high school you learned about a pH scale that goes from 0 to 14, and that'll suit us just fine for today. pH scale goes from 0 to 14. In the middle here, 7. 
people think of this as being neutral. It's very difficult to obtain this, but if you were to take water and filter it and then boil it to drive off the carbonic acid and carbon dioxide that's dissolved, you would have pH of 7 or neutral water. Then you'd have to cap it real quick and keep it away from the air because it reacts with the air, carbon dioxide and air in particular, to make it slightly acidic. So your water coming out of your tap usually has a pH of about 5.6 plus or minus a little. It's because I don't know where your water's been. It's been aerated, been going through pipes, picking up some oxygen, some carbon dioxide. Probably has a few impurities in there, some dissolved minerals, chlorine, things like this, and that's just fine. Down over towards the left, these things over here are called acids, and they have low pH. Things over here on the right are called bases, and they have high pH. Quite frankly, for today, we'll define our acids as being high in the concentration of proton. Well, hydrochloric acid is a strong acid. Would it have a low pH or a high pH? It would have a low pH pH is going to be very low because it's high in proton concentration. Let's take a moment and go ahead and calculate the pH of this solution. But first, please do not forget that acids have low pHs and bases have high pHs. I think the tendency without thinking about this much is to say, oh, acids and strong acids that are high in proton concentration have high pHs. People like associating high numbers. That's not the case. And uh, I have a little story for you, for you to remember that acids have low pHs. I, uh, I haven't had my hair cut at a uh, barber in about, oh, 10 years. Uh, my wife or daughter cut my hair with a razor real quickly because I have a phobia of going into barber shops and salons. About 10, 11 years ago, I was getting a haircut and I sat down in the chair and a gentleman comes up and starts to cut my hair and says, you have really dry hair. And I said, yeah, 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 it's dry. I, I work outside a lot and garden and work on cars. I love being outside. And so uh, this continues with, your hair has a really high pH. It's really acidic. Well, he had that backwards. He says, I've got a high pH, it's really acidic, and I'm thinking my hair probably doesn't have much of a pH, but uh, I didn't want to tell him that I was, uh, knew a little bit about chemistry, so I let him cut the hair, and uh, he tried to sell me on some conditioner product to fix my high pH acid problem. And I said, no, thank you very much, and I paid him, and I was about to leave, and I brought myself to turn around and say, you know, I do know a little bit about chemistry, and actually, low pH goes with a uh, acidic solution and not a high pH. And he looked real carefully at me and says, well, you know, you're old. And maybe that's how it was when you went to school, but they've changed it. And I was pretty outraged. He called me old and stupid. And so I won't go back into a barber shop anymore. That little story should remind you, of course, acids have low pHs. To do this problem, we need a formula for the pH. It's a very, very, very small, simple formula. The pH is equal to the negative log of the hydrogen ion concentration. Now, on your calculators, this is usually one or two keystrokes. We have our hydrogen ion concentration from our analysis. We'll take the log of it, and then we'll go ahead and change the sign. So on your calculators, you'll probably hit the LOG button, and then you'll put in the number 0 0.150, and Oh, perhaps you have an equal sign or an enter button. If this gives you an error, these two are out of step and need to be reversed. You might have to put the number in first and then hit log on your calculator depending on your model. And what we're looking for is we're looking for the log of 0.105. My calculator is going to return this value, negative 0.8239. Now, that would be just fine if the formula for the pH was to take the log of the hydrogen ion, but we need to change the sign. So I'm going to go ahead and change the sign here on my calculator. Maybe hit the plus or minus button. And the pH of 0 0.150 molar HCl is positive 0.82. I'm going to call it 4 there to go to three significant figures. On the pH scale, that appears way down towards the zero over here. I'm going to make a little note here that this is for the HCl. In particular, for HCl that has a concentration of 0.150. So the HCl is really close to zero. 
pretty acidic stuff. Now, this is not equilibrium. This lies 100% to the right. Let's take a look at an equilibrium acid problem.